Hey YouTube, Joshua C here. If you happen to have a 1996 to 2002 Honda Civic, if your engine is clean and there's no valve cover leaks, however if you have on the uh, transmission side a lot of oil, I'll show you guys a quick fix uh, on how to do that right now. So obviously assessment always requires uh, observation. So once that you ruled out the valve cover uh, gasket not leaking, and as you guys can see evidence here, it's heavy leak on this side, all over here. Uh, the main culprit, if you dance your way up, uh, in this case is around the distributor. And usually uh, on these single cams, what it is is this distributor o-ring. So what I'm going to do is replace it right now. Alright, so the replacement of this o-ring is going to require you to remove the distributor. And what that entails is you marking this in reference to the head because this is a timing component. Uh, disconnecting um, a couple of these electrical connectors and uh, removing these three 12 millimeter fasteners. Uh, also, you want to keep track of your um, spark plug wires and how they're oriented on the distributor cap. So there's various means of doing that. Uh, me, I just know that this is one, and the firing order is one, three, four, two. So I'm not too worried about this. Plus, you could always take a picture or have uh, some sort of video reference anyway. So I'm going to remove the uh, spark plug wires from the distributor cap. Okay, after removing those, I'm going to set those to the side, and I'm going to unhook this electrical connector. Now you could go on through the back and lift up on this little tab, and that should release it. And that should grant you a greater purchase on removing this. These can be quite difficult. As you can see, someone in the past used a screwdriver to separate these. Good luck on this. This is probably the most difficult part of this job. Okay, so after that's removed, here, let me show you uh, so you guys can study uh, how this goes apart. You simply push down on this uh, release tab, and uh, it should decouple. Uh, but good luck on that. Uh, even this one was quite difficult. After removing that, you should be able now to uh, remove uh, these three 12 millimeter fasteners. So one is located up top and clearly visible. The next one is right here uh, on the front of the block, right there. And the final one is located, I don't know if you guys can see that, right there. So, boop boop. I'll show you the tools I'll use to remove that. Okay. So the tool uh, that I'm using to uh, remove the three fasteners are a 3 8 inch drive ratchet, a 4 inch 3 8 inch drive extension, and a 12 millimeter uh, shallow 6 point socket. This setup is uh, perfect for uh, all three fasteners. So take those off. Uh, just as a reminder, if you uh, haven't marked the distributor in reference to a head, uh, this is a good spot here. So I'd, mar I'd mark it on this location. And that's going to be important for timing, and I forgot to, to note that you have to also remove this one. So you just simply uh, pry this off, just like so. You don't need to disconnect it, and I'm going to remove that final fastener, and they all should be equal length. Here's all bolts, so you guys can see. These are M8 fasteners, if you're looking for it, so they look like M8 by 125. So all of them are all equal length, so don't worry about orientation on uh, reinstallation. So now that all three bolts are off, that electrical connector is removed from this pedestal and disconnected, and this one, the smaller connector, is removed from the pedestal. Uh, now this should permit you to remove the distributor completely. Some oil may come out uh, in this process. Okay, so here it is. And as you guys can see, this is the primary source of the mess. So all that's been going straight down. If you look evidence from this side, the valve cover is very good. And this side, the valve cover is very clean, but all of it is dirty right underneath it. And it's good um, to address this very early because any uh, petroleum and long-term saturation of these parts can uh, shorten their lifespan. So it's good to keep this very clean, uh, ideally. So moving over to the part, as you guys can see, this is the O-ring of interest that we're going to replace. Okay, so here's the part. I wiped it all up. Now I'm going to remove this o-ring. Alright guys, so here's the distributor. I just got done removing the old oil seal. 
Um, I just used a simple uh, pick. It'd be best to use like a non-marring pick, but the strategy you want to do is get underneath the seal and have it go over this lip. But the main thing that you definitely do not want to do is score this surface. If you do mar it, 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 it has potential for that to have a leakage path for the new seal. So be careful of that. Take your time. It'll come off. As you guys can see, this one's really old and not flexible. I mean, look at that. And this is the new one. So with any new part, you obviously want to check and make sure so I'm superimposing it right now and you can see that the dimensions are more or less the same so that's a good thing so it shows you that this part should actually fit so here's the part number it's a Felpro 72454 okay guys so when installing the new seal I insert it into the the ridge the seal uh, seat here and what I do is I tear, uh, I cut open the old o-ring and use it to feed over. And that's important because you don't want this new seal to roll. Okay? So after that, I run this across a couple times and then I pull it. And you guys can see this thing should be perfectly seated. And uh, obviously I lubricated it. And you could actually see the parting line in the seal and how it's not all kinked and rolled over. This is perfect. So this is definitely suitable for installation. Uh, now I'm going to prep the block surface. So now uh, I make sure the uh, mating surface and all the affected block areas are clean. Uh, and that's for mainly one reason. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, after I've repaired it, that it actually stopped the leak. So you have to have a clean basis and the, to bear witness to any uh, oil, oil tracks. So after that said, uh, I'm just going to install the distributor as we speak. So just make sure anything's free of debris. And this is going to be the entry point for the uh, distributor shaft. So I don't know if you guys can see that. But the uh, camshaft is going to have uh, slots. Uh, where is that? There it is. And you guys can see that it's slightly off center. And if you look at the corresponding uh, male end, you can see that that's a little bit off center as well. So that's going to be the engagement. Obviously that's the interface. You cannot get this wrong. So it's not like the older VWs where it could be uh, opposed 180 out. It's literally, you cannot mess this up. It either goes in or it doesn't. You grab the distributor and make sure that it's oriented like it was. And so roughly, and now you could uh, gauge how you're going to uh, phase or index this uh, distributor shaft. Okay guys, so obviously, or I'll pull it out just a little. You want to make sure that the seal is lightly lubricated and it should slide in and out reasonably and you should have enough free room to uh, clock it a little bit but uh, the main thing is you want to uh, center the distributor body first then align the shaft uh, more or less by eye and then install it and if you incorrect and you feel like it's bobbly or binding and then flip it over and if you have the alignment correct it should go in without too much of a fight okay so now what you want to do once it's stabbed on you're going to install all three m8 fasteners just a reminder, make sure your reference mark uh, lines up before you uh, apply your final uh, snug torque on it. Once those fasteners are tight, now what you want to do is uh, now mess with the electrical connector. So the VTEC solenoid, I put it back on the pedestal. And you're going to want to reinstall this connector. First you're going to want to attach it. And then uh, put it on the pedestal. This connector won't disconnect um, if it's uh, still attached to these, uh, this uh, bracket. And now what I'm going to do is install the spark plug wires. Number one is the rearmost. And then it goes the according to the firing order in a clockwise fashion. Cylinder one, cylinder three, cylinder four, and cylinder two along the distributor cap as such. And uh, that should do it. I'm going to fire this thing up and see uh, if there's any leaks. But before you start it up, it would be a good time to check the oil level uh, and fill up accordingly. Hey YouTube, so it's the next day and as you guys can see, I think it's a uh, successful repair. I don't see any leakage. That's good. And this is uh, the next day and probably about, what, 50 miles later. And yes, I did hit VTEC multiple times. Sweet! <laughs> Alright you guys, take care.